All right, let's talk about the slope of a line here. The slope of a line. One thing about slope, everybody likes to make it out to be really confusing. The slope is just a number that tells you how steep a line on a graph is. Um, the definition, just like every math teacher in the history of math has told their students, the slope, I use the letter M for slope. So whenever I see the letter M from now on, I'm thinking that's the slope of a line. Every math teacher in the history of Algebra 1 has told their students that the slope of a line is a ratio of a line's rise over run. And that's a nice little way to remember how to find the slope is the rise over run. When I get a little bit more technical about it, the real definition of the slope is a line's change. I'm going to use the Greek letter delta for change. You might have done that in a science class, but the the lines change in its y coordinate over the change in the x coordinate. So it's just a ratio or a fraction that ends up being a number that tells you how steep a line is. And to find it, you find the change in the y coordinate divided by the change in the x coordinate. In this little example over here, to think about rise over run or change in y, change in x is I pick two points that are on the graph and I've got two nice handy little points here um, and I'm just gonna look at those points and figure out to get from one point to the other how far do I have to rise and how far do I have to run rise of course being my y coordinate so I'm going up and down for the rise so when I get from point to point I always go up or down first keep in mind a down a rise going down would be a negative number but to get from point to point here, I'd have to rise along the grid, run along the grid to get to my next point. This up and down movement, that's my change in Y, and this side to side movement is my change in X. And when I look closer at it, the change in Y, or the delta Y, all I have to do is count spaces. One, two, three, four. So my change in Y was four and the change in the x value when I run along the grid side to side is 1, 2, 3, so my delta x is 3. All I have to do is go over to my fraction here and fill those points in. The slope of this line is delta y, which was 4, over delta x, which was 3. If it's a fraction, I just make sure it's in simplest form, and in this case it is. So the slope of this line right here that you see is 4 thirds. Sometimes it's a fraction. A lot of times it's a fraction. Sometimes it's a number when the fraction actually comes out as a division problem. But a lot of times I end up with fractions. Now let's just say I, I wasn't given this picture and I was given just these coordinates. So I was just given negative 1, comma, negative 2, and the point... 2 comma 2. How could I find the slope if I didn't have this picture here to go by? So let's just take a look at the, the coordinates. Let me see if I can fix that up just a little bit. I erased a little bit too much. The slope between the points negative 1, negative 2, and 2, 2. Okay, and I'm keeping my mind on change in the y coordinate and the change in the x coordinate. So what I'm going to ask myself, and I like to draw these little arrows up on top of my lines. Let me just move this over here where I maybe have a little bit more space to work. Uh, if I can get it to work for me. No, it's not, I'm not going to move it. I'm just going to leave it here. The change in the y coordinates. I remember that this is an x and this is a y. This is another x and another y. So I'm going to draw a line on top from y coordinate of the first point to y coordinate of the second point, and I'm going to ask myself, how much did that number change when it went from negative 2 to positive 2? And that number changed by going plus 4. So that's the top number of my fraction, delta y. The delta y was a positive 4, so I'm just going to write a 4. Then I look at the bottom number and ask myself, how much did this value change when it went from negative 1 to a positive 2. And I know that, that to get from 1 to the other, that's plus 3. So the change in the x-coordinate numbers 
is a positive 3, and that's my slope, the same slope that I got over here, 4 thirds. Okay, sometimes you will get positive numbers, sometimes you will get negative numbers. So I keep this little drawing in mind while I'm over here. On the, over here. Um, I can have four different types of slopes, and I think of them as uphill, downhill, horizontal, and vertical. And here's what these look like. I get positive for an uphill slope. And when I say uphill, I mean when I read along this line and I go from left to right this way, from left to right, the same direction you read, you can see how this line goes uphill. Whenever I find the slope for this, it's going to be a positive number because it's going uphill. Up is positive. When I go downhill as I read, notice how when I go left to right, I'm going downhill. That's going to end up being a negative number. Down is negative, always from left to right. If my line is flat and horizontal, my slope is always going to be zero. It doesn't matter where it's at. If it's perfectly flat and horizontal, the slope is zero. And that makes sense because the change in the y coordinate would be a zero, and zero divided by anything is zero. When I go vertical, however, whenever I have a vertical line, it doesn't change any from top to bottom. I call that slope undefined. It doesn't have a number. It's kind of like uh, infinity. It, it just it doesn't have a number, so it's an undefined slope. As I come down here, uh, let's think of slope as more than just a number. What slope actually is, what it represents, is a rate of change. It's the amount the y coordinate changes as the x coordinate changes. So if I take a look at these, this represents the distance I am away from something. So if I think, I don't know, my uh, drive to and from work every day. That would be a good, well represented by that red line where my distance from home changes over a certain amount of time. If I think about this as the morning when I leave for work, my distance from home is changing. I'm kind of driving at a steady rate, a steady speed away, and then I get to work, and you notice how it flattens out. My distance away from home does not change. It's a slope of zero, so my distance is not changing for this amount of time. And then after I leave work, I start heading home, and my distance from home is going down the, the longer I go. So as time increases from this point to this point, I'm getting closer and closer. My distance from home is going down. One thing I do want to point out about slope is just this first section especially this portion of this red line it says this is a steady speed because my speed is not changing it's a straight line it's a constant rate of speed my distance is changing constantly as the time goes goes forward and then take a look at this green line you notice how it's it's quite a bit steeper my distance is changing a lot faster over the same amount of time if i look at the same time right here at this time x right here the red line has only gone up what about two and a half units the green line has gone up much much more that's three four five six seven units okay so that's a bigger number that would be the the slope of this green line would be about seven over three which is something bigger than two it's two and one third the slope of this red line would be closer to 1. Um, I can't tell exactly because I colored all over it, but it's a little bit less than, than 1, um, which is a lot smaller number. This, is over, this green line is greater than 2, and this red line is less than 1. And you notice as the number increases, the line gets steeper because my distance is changing much, much faster over the same amount of time. Okay, so that's one thing to take away is the steeper the line is, especially with a positive slope, the steeper the line is, the bigger the, the number is. So take a look at some of these problems. Um, remember that slope is just a number. It's just a ratio that represents the rate of change of a line. It's the amount the y value changes.
divided by the amount the x value changes.